Welcome to the Creative Differences Podcast. I'm Gabby. And I'm Demi. And the guys decided not to join us today because they're big poopy heads. <laughs> they're Sith Lords. Well, I don't one know. One of them is sick and then the other one is just sitting here being deciding that he's not going to be part of this. And the reason for that is because we are discussing Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Yes. In preparation for Star Wars Episode 9. Which comes out tonight. Woo woo. So, Gabby, what what are your thoughts on the movie? Is it thoughts or is it like, well, do oh, we start sorry. with like the first well, time yeah, we saw well, it? Well, I know the first time you saw it because we saw it together. Yeah, we did. We, all of us as a group <laughs> we went, went to go see, see this Wars. together the yes. night that it came out. Yep. What was your, I guess the question would be, what was your first reaction then? Your first experience with it? So this movie is super subversive. So my first thought was, I don't know how I feel because it didn't go the way that I wanted it to. And at the time... I was like, what is this? I don't like these scenes with Kylo Ren and Rey. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Why were they fighting together? I was very confused. And now we're here. And I, yes. <laughs> and I was like, why is the movie like, like, uh, so I, I, I don't know if I didn't like it at first because things didn't go my way. I didn't like it at first and I've now seen it hella. And I I have decided that I actually really, really like this movie. I think it's amazing. So Facebook has that Facebook memories thing. And Mm -hmm. I have one from December 14, 2017, which is the day it came out. And this was, I guess, my initial response, like immediately after coming out of the movie was The Last Jedi was nothing like I expected it to be. And that may just be the best thing about it. I need to see it a few more times. Exactly. Like you kind of had to see it more than once. If you really, it, it's, if you had to see it more than once, if you were really, really invested in the characters. It's definitely one of those movies that I feel like regardless, you have to see it more than once to even understand everything that's going on on screen. Exactly. A lot is going on. Yeah. There's like three different pl- storylines that you're following, or three different character lines that you're following. And the thing is, those character lines are very simplistic. Yeah. They're not convoluted in any way. No. It's just a lot of character stuff is happening. Exactly. And that's why I love this film. Yeah, it's really, really good. So let's jump in. The story of The Last Jedi, we pick up where we left off with The Force Awakens. The Resistance is currently on the run from the First Order, and during that time, Poe Dameron, Finn, and mechanic Rose Tico try and find a way to save the Resistance from the First Order in this chase. All while that's happening, Rey is now on the island of Octo with, with Luke, Luke Skywalker and is trying to convince him to return to the Resistance and help save them. And while all this happening is happening, Snoke is abusing Hux and Kylo Snoke Ren. is being Snoke. <laughs> yeah. uh, doing something. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the story... I have no problem with the story. And I think because what I came to the conclusion was after seeing it several times in theaters was the focus wasn't on the story. No, like it's not, it's kind of like empire strikes back. It's, it is empire. Yeah. It's empire. Well, it's empire and it's return of the Jedi, but it's so completely different at the same time. Wait, what? No, I didn't, I didn't get return of the Jedi. I've I've got some return of the Jedi parallels. Okay. Tell me, Um, but like it's, but here's the thing about um, Lucasfilm and second acts. The second a- movie in a trilogy for Lucasfilm is always the darkest one. And it's always, so it's always very character driven. Because yes. if you look at the Empire Strikes Back. Or you if you, you, even if you look at Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. Yeah. If you look at Empire Strikes Back, you could almost take out like, you could almost take out the names that I had inserted in the synopsis that I just gave yeah. and put in the names of the original characters. And it's a very similar plot line. Exactly. Han and Leia are running from the Empire. Well, you start off with yeah. an evacuation of a rebel base. Yeah. And then Han and Leia are trying to get away from the Empire. Luke goes to train to become a Jedi. Yeah. Poe, Finn, and Rose are trying to get away from the Empire. Yeah. Ray is trying it's to go train to become a Jedi. And is being trained by a somewhat reluctant and grumpy master. Yes. That's like taking, like, who is messing who with Who has them exiled a themselves bit. from society. Exactly. Like, so it's Empire. <laughs> so the thing is, but the thing about this one is, and that's what I love about Star Wars. Star Wars, the stories echo in Star Wars. Yeah. It's very much a story about if you don't learn from your past, you're doomed to repeat it again. So. AKA real life. Yes. Return um, of Nazis. But Ryan Johnson do, makes it at least interesting where, unlike Force Awakens, where Force Awakens is very similar to 4 and everybody felt like they were still watching episode 4. Yeah. Ryan Johnson goes, well, how do I change this and make it different and make it something worth saying? No. What am I trying to give audiences? And it felt like he sat down and went, okay, where does this character start? Where do they need to be at the end of this movie? So that when episode 9 comes out, like, this is who they are and they're ready now to fight the final battle. battle. Yeah. Because that's how, that's how the story arcs. That's how story arcs work. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's how this works. So this story isn't about pushing so much 
as the plot forward. Same thing as with Empire the Strikes Back. They're placing them where they need to yeah, be. Yeah, it's about placing your, it's like placing your characters on the chessboard where they need to be in order for you to win. Yeah. Or like, I, I feel like, especially when a, a character goes from like a complete novice to a like a, a like skilled fighter in yes. something, you have to, you want to see that actual growth or you want to believe that that character at the end of their training is actually capable of completing the fight that they're going to go do right and i feel like a lot of it is less like the physical stuff that they go through and a lot of most of it is the character development right yes. ray arrives on the island and she's like i don't know how to well fight. yeah speaking of characters let's just jump into the characters which is my favorite part of this movie mm-hmm. is the character development and the character growth that goes through yes. it that's what and you come so to this movie feelings. for god i love every character arc in this movie yeah like i think they're all so great now if you i like the character arcs there's there's like plot lines that characters follow that i'm like uh, if you're not feeling the execution that's a whole different thing yeah but thematically and character wise i feel like this movie is very strong and i don't necessarily agree with execution issues that a lot of people have with this film yeah i mean i guess we can go character for character like poe starts out like hot shot pilot you get the feeling poe really does want to do the right thing and but he endangers he doesn't more than un- necessary. Yeah, he doesn't understand. Or I feel like he doesn't necessarily understand that an alive soldier is much more valuable than a dead one. He's he's he wants more, the glory. Of yeah, the he heroism. wants the glory, and he also wants to complete. Like completing the mission is more important than all of our lives, yeah. which is. I think is taking it too far. And I, I like that he eventually learns, you know what? It's yeah. more important to and keep my he, homies alive. Yeah. He goes from jumping into an next wing and blowing something up as mm-hmm. Leia tra- says mm-hmm. to trying to save his fleet. Yeah. Because the fleet is far more important than the victory. Yes. Because if you live another day, that's a bigger victory. Yeah. Or like you won the battle, but you're going to lose the war. Yeah. You got to live to fight another day. Yeah. And a lot of people, I feel like don't like Poe's storyline. A lot of people try and like nitpick at it. And I'm like, no, I like people, his storyline. A lot of people I think, think that important. like his character, like he's out of character. Poe doesn't really have a character in the fourth. No, Awakens. he doesn't. But we get a very, he's likable. Exactly. He exactly. That's it. But I think it's because I've seen them so many times now. I don't understand how people say that they're out of character because it just seems exactly like they're doing the same things that they did in the previous movie, with the exception being Poe, where we actually get a rounded out person. Yeah, I feel like Ryan Johnson mm-hmm. took the characteristics that we got from them in the Force Awakens, and then he just kind of emphasize them a lot more yeah he was like what would he what le- for example um what's his name finn yes finn, finn ran can away next. he can move on to finn <laughs> and he yeah. spent the whole movie running away in the first movie yes and of course he's gonna s- immediately try to run yeah his first instinct is, is to run and i think the distinction is that yes the first movie finn was running for his own life yeah in episode eight he's running for his own life and Ray's life. Yeah. He finally has somebody that he cares about and he wants to run because he wants to save her and him. Yeah. The growth that he undergoes is that he discovers you have to be willing to fight for a cause. Yeah. You have because to stand nowhere, for something. Yeah. Know where you run is going to be enough. It's yeah, going it's not to gonna be far you. enough. Yeah. So you have to fight for something. Yeah. And this storyline was the way to show him. And I think he goes through the more moral storyline than anybody else. Yeah. Because my problem the idea. is his storyline though. Most people have a problem with the Canto Bite storyline, which is weird because Canto Bite only takes place 11 minutes out of the two and a half hours. Yeah, I think my problem with it was it beat you over the head a little bit too hard. Also, the the scene through the casino took five ever. And I was like... Literally, it only is it's 11 minutes. No, I know. I know the whole scene in Canto Bite is actually pretty short, but I'm Every like... Every time this- I watch it, it feels shorter and shorter. Yeah. I think it was just like the running through the casino took five ever and it just felt like it beat you over the head a little bit hard. I didn't, I, I didn't feel that. And, but that's and why, that's I why you that. have that issue and I don't. But seeing the movie, the amount of times I have now, I understand the point character wise yeah. with that storyline. You just so don't I'm like, like that. I'm willing to sit through it, but I just don't like it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, like Finn starts the movie. His first line is literally where's Ray. Yeah. And then it ends with him. Basically almost committing a kamikaze act yeah, to save was, the the resistance. Yeah, he was going a little hard there. He was he went from one extreme to the other. Yeah. And it was like, Well, you're going too like, hard. Chill, chill out, buddy. I mean that's what that's <laughs> Rose was like Rose is important. Rose she's was like, like simmer it down, buddy, simmer it down. Rose was like, wait a minute, hold on. She's like, Stop. No, I didn't say all that. <laughs> you can't go from one extreme to the other. You gotta no. you gotta find a find a balance. Yeah. Find a balance on me. Uh, and I really like Rose Tico's character. I really like Rose because I like the purpose that she serves. Um, I want to see more of her character in the next movie. Oh, I want to see I her so. like, 
actually develop because she was definitely like you know the manic pixie dream girl ish i feel like like she develops but her development is a lot more subtle than everybody else's (laughs) yeah because she goes from being behind the scenes to having a voice yeah and being at the forefront and then she's actually somebody that was like very oppressed by the oh absolutely yeah so it's it's kind of like leia was a princess that saw an atrocity saw atrocities but she, because she had like diplomatic power, she wasn't necessarily. In she had somebody, privilege. Yeah. She didn't necessarily experience atrocities. Right. She saw well, it and she saw and it. Did something about it. Yeah. But she didn't necessarily. She was like, she was in jail for about 15 minutes. But yo, check out <laughs> Leia, Prince of, of Alderaan. Fantastic book. Yeah. Or like Rise of the Resistance. I know. I know there's other books. But what I'm saying is that like Leia is a person in a position of privilege. Rose's character is not. She was somebody that was like abused. She was from a planet and they came to her planet and they stripped the planet of everything. She left to join the resistance and then they basically destroyed her planet. Exactly. So she was somebody that like really, really, really suffered at the hands of the Empire. Of the First Order. Sorry, the First Order. For me, it's exciting to see somebody at that level come to the forefront. She's also kind of like the audience eyes because she is she starts off as kind of a fangirl she is a fangirl oh my gosh resistance hero like she is what you would be if you met somebody who just saved like every a bunch of people and it's great let's move on we have like three more characters to get through kylo ren his storyline which is he literally just regresses that's his entire storyline yeah and that's not a bad thing character development can also mean that you just regress yeah and kylo ren regresses i don't don't know if he necessarily (sighs) Okay. See, no. here's the thing. That's he, where the discourse is going to come in, and I'm trying to avoid it. Listen, he starts out trying to prove that he's just as big and bad as his grandfather. Yeah, but but and he's also very, very conflicted. He is conflicted, and he's been conflicted since Force Awakens. Yeah. But the thing is, he's once again offered the opportunity to redeem himself, to be a good guy, and he doubles down. And he goes from being... A well, t- I, I don't know if he doubles down. I think he, he no, made he a very down. enormous, very snap decision in destroying, like the most powerful person and and like his master and probably is because it's a very big choice right to it is either leave everything and 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 especially when like you're you're the big baddie on the other side you're not going to necessarily be welcomed but nobody says that he has to go back to the resistance no i know but it's just kind of like he makes the offer to i do he makes the offer to ray that they can strike out on their own and instead of deciding to do that even though she doesn't want to join him he decides that i'm going to double down and i'm going to be i'm going to be the supreme leader he goes from being a child in a mask to being a child in the mask, but the Supreme Leader. <laughs> and I guess, but I just... Well, without the mask, though. He doesn't have the mask on. Yeah. The movie. I just... I don't know. Because I, I've seen this a bajillion times and so at this I. point, and I'm just kind of like... See, and here's the thing. I believe that Kylo Ren is a very... He's a very complex character, which is why I love Kylo Ren as a villain. Because he's not a, just a straight-up villain. But, I, yeah, he's definitely not. And but I, I like, do believe that he, he doubles down. And that's not to say that he's doubled down because he doesn't have conflicted feelings, but he does double down in his actions. Yeah. I mean, he does consistently choose to be evil when he does not have to choose to be evil. I guess. I don't know. I just, I just feel like, well, no, he definitely does, but I feel like it's not, it's not as simple as like, I'm choosing to be evil because I need to choose to be evil. It's like, I'm choosing to be evil because I, I feel know, like Matt. this is the only side that actually accepts me. He chooses like, to be do evil I want and then to goes, hey, roll the guys, dice. I'm, he with, tells his uncle that he's straight up going to destroy the resistance and he's going to kill Ray. Well, yeah, because his uncle tried to kill. It doesn't matter. We're getting into discourse. No, no, I refuse to fall into this trap. But what, what I want to say get, is like, this is why we shouldn't be left alone to talk no, about this movie. No, I know. <laughs> but like the last thing I want to say about Kylo is like, I feel like the reason he doubles down on being evil isn't because I think it's because he's like, this is the side that has in my eyes supported me forever. Why would I roll the dice and try to be quote unquote good and then risk rejection from the other side? Well, right. To be and good. like, you, you can just be neutral. Well, I know, but it's like I could I could stay here where I know that I have support, which is which he is doesn't like, though. That's the thing. Hux doesn't like him. No, Hux was about to kill him. But he has it, when if he stays, he's at the command of all these people, and necess- he yeah, might not necessarily want to be. Yes, but he has something. He, Whereas if he like throws it all, and like it's a big choice. Ray also acknowledges it's a big choice because she can't. She, because one of the options presented to the two of them is like, fuck all this. You and me together, let's just 
leave this place. And even that is a hard choice for Ray. She's like, I, I, I don't like, I know I've known these people for like a week and a half, but I can't just leave them. But I also think exactly. that's because he catches her at a moment where she's most, I say, oh, we can't get into this right now. No, we're, we're not. not gonna we're go going to move on. But, but that's all I wanted to say. I just felt like we're going to, however, likely, we like, are going to move on to Ray in yeah. her character arc, which is that she goes from believing that her origins determine who she is and where she belongs. And she becomes a person who realizes that and she gets she, to decide for herself exactly who she is where she belongs and yes. she gets to decide what her worth is yeah and dude if they if they what is it called when you go back and you change like retcon if they retcon that she's somebody important backstory. i'm I gonna be that. super upset because i'm like no like that's important that she's not part listen, of the and i understand i spent two years theorizing that she was like luke skywalker. daughter or something like I, that listen, i was on board the idea that she was luke skywalker's daughter and kenobi's granddaughter like i was like that's, dude i'm that i'm would be dope i'm like <laughs> and, but, I, but i was on that but i like that she's nothing and nobody from nowhere because like, that's yes. always been the point of star wars anakin skywalker was, was a, a nothing was a slave. yeah he was and born luke was like slavery. a kid in like the middle of like nebraska he was a like, farm boy in a yes, desert exactly like, he was superman kansas anakin was a child of prophecy come on he but was like, a child of prophecy but when but they found had, him like he was the nobody. conditions in which they found him yeah, Anakin Skywalker was a nobody. Luke Skywalker, yes, his father was Anakin Skywalker, but he was a farm boy. He thought he was nothing. And Rey, no matter who her parenthood is, even if she was a Skywalker or whatever, she still had nobody. And that's the point. And I think it's better that she, she believes that her parents yeah. are nobody, that they are. I, I think it should be that she comes from nobody. Because the, yeah. the fandom has gotten too caught up in the idea of bloodlines when yeah. it comes to the Force. Exactly. And the Force has always been about, no, the Force connects everybody. Yeah. It's about everybody. So Which is also what the... But whose fault is that, though? Because this entire series no, 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 no. has been everything has to be connected to the Skywalkers. No, no, no. So when you're presented with that, what else are you going to think? But that be- they're the most important people in the universe and nobody else really matters. No, it's called the Skywalker Saga. This follows a family. However, even in the Skywalker Saga, we've been introduced to Jedi who are not Skywalkers and who are very powerful. Yeah. So, but I love Rey. Rey has always been... Ray is probably my favorite character of all time within the Star Wars universe because as a kid, I wanted to be a character in Star Wars who was trained by Luke Skywalker to be a Jedi. And there were like no girl Jedi in that well, series. Well, in the Hispanic universe there were, but never but mind. But no, but like in the Star Wars movies, oh, yeah, there no, were there no were, girl Jedi. No, not, not at that point. So when Ray came about, I was like, oh my gosh, she's literally everything I wanted to be as a kid. So I have such an attachment to who Ray is as a person and her storyline and who she ends up becoming as the storyline goes along. So I'm always really interested uh, in her. She's so compassionate. And like, even when she's angry or she's impatient, she's, she's compassionate for people, um, even if she doesn't really want to be. Yeah. And I, and I love her for that. I love her as a character. Y'all can call her a Mary Sue all you want to. I'm going to fight you on it. I don't think she is. <laughs> She's definitely still flawed. She's very flawed. She like, is- the second movie when I was like, the first time I saw it, I was like, why is this bitch trying so hard for this dude? Like, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you FedExing yourself to him? She's that not, though. That whole scene in the elevator, She's I was like, okay. what is up with this? That's a Return of the Jedi parallel. No, I know. But what <laughs> I'm saying is... That I was like, oh boy, sucks. Like he's worse than Vader because he's but out here. Like, but she had. But that's the thing about Ray. She had a vision, and she saw exactly. She had the optimism and was like, you know what? If this is an option, if this is a way that things can be saved, then this is the op- This is what yeah. I'm gonna do. If this is what I have to do, I'm gonna do it yeah. because it's the right thing to do. And that's what I love about Ray. That's Moving fair. on from Ray, though, we're gonna move to her master, Luke Skywalker, the final character that we should discuss, yeah. and possibly the most divisive of all characters in this movie. I love. Luke Skywalker's storyline in this I movie. Like he's Yoda. He is. He's well. He's Yoda, and he's Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a which lot makes of, sense. They're both his masters. I know a lot of people, including myself, w- self were were expecting it to to come into eight, and Luke Skywalker was going to be this Jedi master hero and going to kill a bunch of people and going to be like awesome, like you know, Luke Skywalker no. hero. But it's far more interesting that he is a flawed also person. it fits because he's been gone he put he exiled himself jj like, abrams kind of left it there. like why would you expect the dude that's exiled himself and uh, disconnected himself from the force so to the point where his sister doesn't even know where he is and like like what would you expect from him yeah like when she hands him that lightsaber like at the end of the movie like what did you think he was gonna take it and look at it and be like wow i haven't seen it in like so long oh my god wow like, i'm gonna no. go i'm just gonna yep. i'm gonna be a one-man army and go against the first order no like no no as he says in the movie 
I think it's far more interesting that Luke Skywalker is a man who He's feels kind of like so much guilt. See, what I love is, so Yoda goes into exile because he has mm-hmm. failed the entirety of the Jedi Order and he cannot defeat Darth Sidious. Yeah. You parallel Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker goes into exile and the weight of his guilt for nearly killing his nephew. The weight of the guilt, the fact that you can equate the or, weight of Luke's like, guilt not just, to losing the Jedi just Order. Like, it wasn't just like losing his nephew. It was like losing everything he had built in that one night. Because but I think it's he, mostly about he it's mostly about Kylo Ren, though. Was it? Because he lost everything that night. He did, but it was because of Kylo Ren. Yeah. And but he felt the regret the moment that it happened. Yeah. And Luke Skywalker has always been. I don't care how much of a hero he is. He's always been impatient. He has always been reckless. He yeah. has always been uh, so it's on brand it's on brand i don't know i don't care what you say it's on brand that luke skywalker would do something so impulsive because that's who luke Luke skywalker is luke skywalker nearly killed his father because he threatened leia and then after nearly killing his father he realizes oh he has the same and the shot is the same basic shot is the same emotion on his face he realizes that he's wrong and that he's doing the wrong thing and that he's going down a dark path and he stops himself in the situation though with Darth Vader, he realizes it before he kills his father. Yeah. With Kylo Ren, he realizes it before he kills Kylo Ren. But like before not he before kills Ben, Kylo but not before Ben sees it. And yeah. the amount of shame that Luke Skywalker feels for it yeah. is heartbreaking. And Ben was already a mess. Like yeah, Ben was already a mess. <laughs> and also the scene. Oh God, the scene with Yoda. That the scene amazing. with Yoda is like one and of the best scenes. And also Puppet Yoda. They it's brought Puppet back Yoda. Puppet Yoda. And that whole conversation about failure because that's the whole point of this movie that, is that that's what failure is. is the best teacher yeah. nobody succeeds they in literally this movie. said it in the movie i think yeah every everybody fails in this movie yep. and I, I think a lot of people want to go into a movie and you don't see characters fail like this but they fail no. hard in this movie everybody but also like if you know if you c- just stopped for a minute and thought about the the way that a lucas trilogy normally goes they fail at the end of the they second movie. fail but in that's the second how it, movie once again three act structure i could spend hours exactly. just talking about the structure of these movies that's and how true it but like lucas usually doubles down like attack of the clones ended in a little bit of a failure not that bad you know what? i would say that attack of the clones ends in a false victory yeah that's more what it is. Well, but like our characters end up a little bit beaten and broken at the end. Like, like yeah, Count Dooku but, still gets away. Yeah, but it's anyway, a victory it because matter. they won the battle. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker gets the girl, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But it's a false victory at yeah. the end of the day. Exactly. But yeah, like. Like I, if you know anything about the way that they normally structure things, especially, especially with Lucas, you would have known that this movie would have, is not going to be a happy ending. I also love that. So the scene with him and, and Leia, their final scene together. Mm. It was too, like, perfect of a scene for the moment that we were going through having to say goodbye to Carrie Fisher. The line, no one has ever really gone. It's so much. And it's just, uh, every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm emotional. But also, I think that giving Luke this amount of complexity gives Mark Hamill more to do. And I think that this is one of his best performances. Yeah. I hope it it leads to more work or, like, more dynamic work for Mark. Yeah. But that's it for the characters. What was the next thing? Visuals? Our next thing is visuals, sound. Dude, all the practical effects in this movie. Bruh, the cinematography on this movie. This is for the real. best looking Star Wars movie ever. And I know people, uh, will, people will argue Rogue One. No, for, but Force Awakens for me. Last Jedi. The cinematography on Last Jedi, man. It is the, beautiful, though. The production design, Dude, the cinematography, the, the lighting. The scene on the planet. The, the red the, thro- the throne room yes, dude the throne room scene no okay the literal one of the best shots in the entire movie is when we get to uh the salt, the planet, salt planet and it's the, it's when we first get there and you see leia with that like yes. her outfit covering like half her face that <sighs> shot that shot yeah just that shot yep like i don't understand how people don't like this movie this, oh my gosh it is such a beautiful movie. Oh, yeah. It is should have be- been nominated for an Oscar for cinematography. It is like, beautiful. It? for. I don't think it was, and I think it, it should have been. It, rude. it was beautiful thematically. It was beautiful on screen. Like, <sighs> the visuals, some of the best visuals. I know some people would argue that Rogue One is the best looking Star Wars film, but I think that this one is. Rogue One's up there, but this one. Rogue One's definitely up there. For yeah. me, it's it's Last I watched, Jedi. Or not Last Jedi, Force Awakens. I watched Rogue One last week, and like, but, for sure, Rogue One is definitely up there, but I think Last Jedi is the best looking one. Yeah, they did a good job on this one. It is. It is wow the scale all of it just everything is just so yeah. good looking i could do the scene where they hyperdrive through the the ship oh my gosh that where, one. yeah the kamikaze scene with holdo yeah. oh my gosh that scene is gorgeous and the silence too yes of that scene, no sound Ooh. like i remember us sitting in that theater 
and nobody made a noise. No. It is silent. It is oh my gosh. Like so oh. so many great just visual moments in this film. Yep. Like, that's great. That's the visuals are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. The sound design. Star Wars has always been really good with I the mean, sound design. I mean, they win like an Oscar every time. Well, not yeah, every for the time, most part. Yeah. Like, yeah. Music, it's one of my favorite mm-hmm. um Star Wars scores. Yeah, it does a good job. Like to the point where I have a digital copy of this movie and I bought it specifically because it comes with a music only version of the movie. What? So there is no sound except the music. What? Yeah, they took the dialogue out, took the sound effects out, took everything out. It's just the music. You just watch the movie with the music. So like their mouths are moving, but there's no. But there's no, nope, oh, just the music. <laughs> the music is so good and I love it so much. The visuals are great. Moving the visuals on. are great. Sound is great. You know, it's a well-made movie, guys. Like on a technical level, this movie is just really well-made. Yeah. It's a big, big production and it's just super well-made. And then favorite aspects. I <laughs> I have a list, dude. I have a full-on list. Okay, just do your top one. We, no, I don't have. A, I don't have a. Top, I don't have like a top one. I love the use of foreshadowing in this film. It is used several times throughout this film. So, like, there's the foreshadowing of Haldo's kamikaze path. It is foreshadowed when Leia goes out of the ship when she comes back using the Force. If you watch the the hologram of the ship that's on the screen yeah she goes through the ship and it breaks apart in the same way that it does when Haldo goes straight through it oh it is absolutely cool the foreshadowing of luke's death when kylo oh. sees ray and yeah. he says you aren't doing this the effort alone would kill you yes yeah. and then luke skywalker does it later on Literally in the film he does yep uh-huh. <laughs> the foreshadowing of kylo ren's movements in the battle versus luke through ray because she does foreshadow his every movement kylo's yep if you they're in love no No, they're not (laughs) we're not getting into that (laughs) but she foreshadows his every movement in the scene where she's practicing with the lightsaber against that rock she does every single move that kylo ren does against luke skywalker later on in the film Ah, and it's phenomenal that's why luke knew what to do i love the three temptations of ray uh (laughs) what she has she she gets tempted by the dark side three different times the first time when luke is teaching her about the force the second time when she goes into the cave to find out about her parents and the third time when kylo ren offers for her to join him Ah. she is tempted by the dark side three times and she refuses it well i don't know about the second one but she she (laughs) she dove right she she dove right in there but she kind of refuses it all the each time also you know what pissed me off about that scene with Uh, with first off the cave is my favorite scene just the, caves, the caves are a good scene um no not the cave scene i'm talking about this first scene with luke where where he's like you just went straight for the dark side you didn't even hesitate i'm like bitch you did the same thing well he did it differently. he did That's- but he did it though he was like you know what there's something dark in there let me go investigate <laughs> and oh like, and empire strikes back and like he just ran straight in an empire and i'm like luke why are you getting mad at her for doing this i same mean yoda kind of no no did. yoda told him that he would have to go in but he shouldn't take his weapons with him because he wouldn't need them and he did not listen and he took his weapons in yeah but he also went in there he was like ready to go jump right in he was but you know and, like, also he went in too early the ca- I, favorite aspect cave scene is literally my favorite scene in the whole movie because it's so freaking ambiguous and avant-garde and it fits with lucas's lucas had a very avant-garde filmmaking process before doing star wars i love the luke yoda and obi-wan parallels in this movie luke being the exiled old master yes. who's not exactly what you anticipate when you first meet him um, Although I'll, low key is exactly what you anticipate if you were paying attention. I love the Ray and Luke parallels as well, which there are several. Yeah. Um, Ryan Johnson's directing style—he has a tendency of using character perspective and bias several times over in in the films, and yeah. he does that in Knives Out too. So he tells you a story a certain way, and then he tells you a story a different way. Oh yeah. And then he reveals what actually happened. Yes, 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 yes. I like that. And he and he does do that in Knives Out. Yeah, he does that in Knives Out. He, he does it here. Yeah, which I I I think is like probably my favorite thing about the stories of Kylo's like because because if you're not paying attention, it looks the same. Oh, but it's totally different. But it's totally different. Each time, Each it's, time, time really it's different. completely different. Some- and then it reveals about something about the character. Like Kylo in his head thought all these adults like hate me, hate him and that he's there's something wrong with him. And then that's where the dark side was able to creep in and like Manipulate take him away. Him. Yeah. Whereas like Luke was like, he attacked me. He like, or like I went and taught like in, in Kylo's version, Luke has a lightsaber and Luke's version the first time Luke doesn't have any weapons and he's trying to talk yeah, like in, a normal in person. In Luke's version, I think Luke wants to appear to Ray as the legend that he is. Yeah. 
And yeah. Or like. But then the third version is. Is like. You know, there's, no, all, there's always it's, it's this in person's the story, that person's story, and the truth. And it's and the, somewhere in the middle. And the third version is the truth. Yeah. I've seen people say, oh, I believe Kylo's version better. I'm like, no, no the that's why there's a third a, version because that's the truth. the truth. Yeah. That's what actually happened. Yeah. I love the ambitious themes. This is the most ambitious. I feel like this is the most ambitious Star Wars movie ever made. What do you mean? Like, they went into this with, like, big ideas. Like, big things to talk about. Yeah. Like, the themes are really ambitious. And you didn't have to go that hard. At all. Yes. Like, we, it got really meta. This well, movie is super meta. Yeah, I think it's telling the fandom to, like, chill the fuck out. <laughs> but also, at the same time, it's saying that these movies are important. I mean... Yeah. They are, but also chill the fuck out. Yeah. Like, it's not your story. So it's our story to tell. I was and tell- you can choose to like it or not. I was telling you the parallels to Empire and Jedi. So, I have a list. A movie filled with failure, separation of its heroes, which is Empire. Mm-hmm. Rey and Kylo confronting Snoke is parallel to Luke and Vader in Return of the Jedi. They're even positioned in similar ways. Okay. The look Luke gives in his shame, the same look when he gives when he nearly kills Vader in Jedi. Yeah. Um, also... Yoda telling him you were always looking to the horizon, never in the present. That's yeah. always been one of Luke's downfalls that he's always looking to the pre- he's always looking to the future, which is why he leaves Yoda in Empire. Yeah, always makes a mistake because he's and also to the future. part of the impulse. Yeah, honest. and then the continued use of wardrobe color as symbolism for our lead heroes. The first movie, Rey was in a sort of off-white costume. Yes. Last Jedi, she's wearing a lot of gray. Yeah. Very much. We don't know if she's going to go to the dark side or not. Very not sure. And in Return of the Jedi, Luke wears black Mm -hmm. for almost the entire movie. And then while he's fighting Vader, part of his shirt comes undone and a white patch comes out showing that he's always been good the entire time. Yeah. And one of the other things that I absolutely love about this movie is that the idea that stories and legends matter and that the Star Wars legend itself, the mythology of Star Wars matters. Yeah. Through the final image of that child. Yeah. Who's inspired by the legend of Luke Skywalker. Because yep. that child is every one of us who's ever watched Star Wars as a kid and went, I want to be a Jedi. But it's also like serving a plot point in the movie where it's like, that's the seeds of the resistance. The resistance is not dead. Yeah. But it's also, it's so layered. I almost cry every single time I watch the movie because of that last shot. <laughs> because I remember being that kid (laughs) i was that kid who was like i want to be like luke skywalker i want to go up against the empire like i want to be that kid Mm -hmm. and like that's who that kid is supposed to be it's supposed to be representative of every child who has ever fallen in love with star wars and that's such an optimistic view um cute and i want to see these are kids movies just kidding (laughs) but they are (laughs) they are you're not lying okay so what are you expecting from episode nine um the rise of skywalker Wait, I didn't get to talk about what I like. What's your favorite aspect? Yeah, to me. Bro, <laughs> you could have jumped in at any point, homie. No, I know, but like you were going down your list. Oh. Uh, uh, my, uh, uh, okay, so I like that it added complexity to every single character. I particularly like the Kylo Ren Ray plot line because I. So it's a lot like the Luke Vader plot line. Yeah. But. With two people that at this point, as far as we know, have nothing connecting them Except other than the force. the force. They're kind of foils for each other. Which they I like. are. But like, I always like a good Luke foil. And, and, and Vader, like that's a father and a son. Yeah. And so it's a, like it, it's it's Luke as a son trying to bring his father back to light. Darkness rises and light to meet to, it. To meet it. Right. So but with Ray and, and Kylo, it's straight up just they're force users at the same level that find a commonality and i like the way in which they find a commonality in this movie it's kind of like this little secret that they're both talking to each other and they're both connecting but they're both connecting with each other in their own separate with their own separate like lens lens yeah so like kylo is seeing ray through the lens of the dark side and even in their visions when they finally touch like ray he's like you came to the light and kylo's like no you fell to the darkness so like even that is still they're connecting, but they're still looking at the world through their own I've always, separate lenses. I've always found their connection very um, fascinating. And I think The Last Jedi also made it very fascinating. Yeah. At first I was like, this is dumb. Why is this happening? And then by the, but now I'm like, it's complicated and I love it. Um, so that's, that was probably it, my it was, favorite. It was line. worrisome because of what is exactly what has happened. Raylo shippers are everywhere. I but don't think it's, it's, it's that Raylo shippers are not that prevalent and everybody else you hates think us. That. They're not though. And why does every why is everybody so mean to us so hard? It's right there. We can't do this right now. No, I know. But I think the problem is that like it's also just because once you see they, it, you see it, and then everybody else is saying it's not there, and it's like you feel crazy because it's like it's it's, it's, it's just very because very clearly it's there. just because you guys keep woobifying 
it's not Kylo Ren. Yeah, you are. You guys are trying to equate things that are abusive to romance, but it's not abuse. Er, it's, it's not. It, it, it. We, we, we can't go down this road. We're not going to... Just cut it out. So we should, we should move to the next thing, which is, um, what are you expecting from episode nine, aka The Rise of Skywalker? Uh, the final story of the Skywalker saga, which caused me to cry the other day. I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to put anything on this movie like I put on the last one and be disappointed. I feel like that's a downfall. Yeah. So I've, I've tried really hard to like... Because the only thing that I'm like not hoping for but i just want to fucking know is if they're actually gonna confirm any kind of romance between these two that's like actually obvious to a modern and western audience or like a modern audience otherwise but but even if they don't i don't like i don't want to hope too hard for it because i don't want to be disappointed by this movie yeah i want to try to go in with as little expectations as possible so that i can have a good time because this last the reason i didn't have good time for the longest with the last Jedi was I put too much expectation on it. And some things are a not meant to be answered and B not necessarily meant to be answered in the next movie. Some things are also not meant to be important. Exactly. Like Ray's parents, or like they didn't matter. What mattered was that like some, she was waiting for something, but ultimately anyway, we talked about it. So I don't want to put too Snoke, much on this actually. movie. Mm-hmm. I was thinking Snoke actually. or Snoke. Yeah. He's the equivalent of the emperor who was not important in the original. Trilogy. Exactly. Not Done. important. All right. What am I expecting from this movie? I have no expectations whatsoever, except that it's going to end the Skywalker saga. Yeah. I just that want, is my expectation. I just want to see the ending and I don't want to put anything on this movie. Really. Yeah. I just, I'm trying not to put anything on the romance, but I'm really excited at this point and I, it's inevitable. After what happened with the last Jedi and everybody's, you know, disappointed with, with their theories and stuff like that. I just decided I just don't want to make theories anymore for movies. I just want to go in and i just i want to judge it based off of like not knowing i think too theories much about are it. fun i think attaching don't, yourself don't get super to attach hard. to them yeah. yeah i think like coming up with theories is super fun because it's just kind of like it's a you, thing People and do you it. get to feel like you were part of it or like you got in the head of the filmmaker a little bit just but don't just get don't attached. get too attached because that's where you get like upset and angry yeah. and it's just like no and, and instead of accepting the story as it is as it is yeah and what it was and intended you don't have to, to be you don't have to like the story as it is but no. like you can't be like you can't get angry yeah. at the filmmaker for completing their story like this isn't about you bro <laughs> which is something that i'm i'm learning it's like i, I also, love this yeah, thing but too. it's not about me it's about the people that made it and them presenting it i don't have to like it but i also can't dislike them for going the route that they chose to go with their character yeah. so i have i have no expectations um except that it's going to end i'm expecting i've heard the ending in the end set piece is going to be ridiculous. So I'm excited about that. I have not seen the final trailer as I've said on this podcast before. Seen I anything. have avoided it. I've seen the first two teasers. I have avoided everything else and I have succeeded thus far. I'm just and excited. I'm excited. I, also, I've had a really great time watching John Boyega on this press tour. He has a great time every press tour and it's been fun. <laughs> I remember I talked about, I cried during the black widow trailer. Yeah. It finally hit me. The star star Wars finally hit me. I didn't need a trailer. But it's not over. But it's th- the Skywalker saga is over. Yeah. I was watching Return of the Jedi, a movie that I've been watching for the last 20 years. And I got to the end and I started crying for no reason. And I realized, oh my gosh, it's because next week is it. Or like, Aww. well, tonight is it. This is the, the last of the Skywalker saga, which is a story that I love. I love the Skywalker saga. I yeah. love the Skywalkers. But I'm really excited to see the expanded universe because this is a really great story but it's the story of one family and i want to know about this other the rest of the world because there is a rich mythology and the, an expanded and universe. that's what i've always loved about star wars is that it's something that you can expand upon exactly so i'm like it's really it's, I'm it's, it is sad that this is over yeah. but i'm excited for what's w- next what they're gonna do i am excited especially because like so we're watching the mandalorian and yeah. the mandalorian has nothing to do really with the skywalker at all and i'm still really invested and really excited and i really really like it so to me like i was worried that like other stories in star wars would not catch my eye but all that i've learned is i just really like this universe and i want to know more about it yeah, so i feel the way about the star wars universe that colin has always felt about the harry potter universe i wonder what else is going on yeah there's a lot to do here and i want to go do it i'm just excited to see what's Next. I'm also hoping to buy a version of Ray's Graphlex to go into my lightsaber collection. My very expensive lightsaber collection. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Duke's Custom Sabers for always hooking me up with my saber stuff. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening. I don't know what to ask you guys. How do you guys feel about the movie? It's a very divisive movie. 
What are yeah. your thoughts? Tell us your thoughts on The Last Jedi. I'm excited. I'm glad to have been a part of this podcast because Star Wars, I could talk about Star Wars for hours. I could talk about this very particular Star Wars we movie have for hours. We have talked about this particular Star Wars movie for hours. If you, you know, combined all the time that we've spent talking about it. Yeah, yes. sure. For well, sure. My housemate and I have talked about it for... And I've talked about it for hours with hours. like... I used to be a part of a saber society at mm-hmm. my university. So yeah. I've talked about Star Wars a lot with them too. So, you know, I could spend hours talking about Star Wars. Yep. So thank you guys <laughs> for listening. Shout out to Brendan and I for putting us up on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yes. This is usually the part where Dallas thanks me for putting us up on YouTube. Thank you, Gabby, for joining the Star Wars conversation with me. It's a, usually a pleasure <laughs> as long as Raylo is not involved. <laughs> <laughs> long live Raylo. All right, then. You guys can find us as a unit on Twitter at y'all underscore different. You guys can find us on Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast. You guys can find us on Facebook at Creative Differences. Just look us up. Have a lot of fun. Come talk to us. We would love to talk back. Gabby, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at Stegosoria. And you guys can find me at Dreamy Films on Twitter and Instagram. Dreamy is spelled D-R-E-E-M-I. Thanks again for listening. You guys can find Dallas and Colin at Dark Force Users on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys again for our Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker review. Woo! See you soon. It's been different.